This is a Swin Roadmaster. Well, what's left of it? Girl's bike. <coughs> but I didn't need those bits. What I'm going to do today is make a little cart out of this bike to pull behind my bicycle to carry groceries or whatever from the store. <coughs> and this Roadmaster was um, in a fire so it's a little scorched. You can see on that tube it says 10 speed scorcher although the 10 speed is kind of not as visible on that side. So scorcher being scorched now sets up for reuse and I've got some additional parts I may need to use to uh, support this and, and give it some structure to be able to um, pull it behind the bike. So as I go along and get this thing welded up and hopefully taken some structure, <clears throat> I'm going to have to um, bend those you know, handlebars and stuff and get things lined up. The, uh, the thing I'm most worried about probably is um, getting it in a good enough configuration so that it doesn't hop. So if these line, uh, wheels aren't tracking um, straight, and they don't have enough camber or whatever, <clears throat> they may hop down the road and basically throw anything off the cart that you got on there. Um, so there's going to be a little um, experimentation there. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Uh, what kind of a vehicle designer I might turn out to be but hopefully one that will actually run so this is going to be the first part I'll give some more updates as we go potentially and then uh, a wrap up video uh, and have to get some tires and stuff on it and whatever but uh, we'll see if I can make this thing go I'm setting up for my first weld which is going to be to uh, take the tube and weld it to weld it to the gooseneck and I'm going to do so right inside that little slot there and I got everything lined up and squared up the best I can to get that in there now I suppose I could have just put it all back together with all the parts that uh, make the steer mechanism work um, number one, that would allow the uh, handlebars to turn back and forth. And I don't know if that's a good idea or not. It might let the wheels flip upside down or some crazy thing like that. Um, also, it's a lot of extra weight. And, uh, boy, the more I think about it, I may just try that to begin with and see how, cause how, much, how much weight is that going to be anyway. It's a fairly lightweight frame. Well, maybe I'll rethink that for a bit. Alright, well, I put uh, most of it together. You can see I got the top link hooked up to the bike and the back put together with right now the handlebars are just sitting on there uh, I think that's pretty much the way I want them and I got a little cross piece some uh, I, don't know, I think that was part of a tower some kind of support mechanism for lights or something I don't know but I got that welded up together in a unit with the wheels and then I welded up all of the tubes. And I guess there's really only one weld in that whole deal. Um, but it is kind of a tricky little weld. I want to make sure that angle is going to clear the tires on both dimensions and that everything's going to line up okay. The, uh, the thing about welding tubing is you 
it's a little tricky sometimes to get everything to come out all right but I got that welded fast to the, the bracket that's part of the forks and then show up real good in this picture but um, that's all welded up welded in front and then I just need to weld those two spots there and then it will be ready to go there'll be plenty of opportunity to tie things down onto that um, structure and um, oh, one other thing I wanted to cover it was probably one of the most difficult pieces <clears throat> and it's the smallest piece it's that thing right there that is basically the seat clamp from another bike and I bent a little hitch into it on the bottom side and I can't actually get that to come up which is really what I want because when you're riding down the road you don't want that to come up now in order to get that to come out oh yeah that did it automatically <laughs> you have to uh, sort of let down on the back side or lift up on the bike so that that thing can come out of that little hole so that's got a little slot where I can put the hitch into and then the hitch piece and just the curly piece of metal like that where I can hook it on to so that's about it I'll probably make a little bit more once I get it operational get those two pieces put together and then it should be good to go all right while that joint may pass a few tests like hey it's pretty simple the problem is this joint is very dynamic it moves around in three dimensions especially before I tightened down the handlebars so they couldn't move up and down so now at least they're fixed in that dimension but that joint just is not sufficiently rigid to hold up to a lot of um, dynamic twisting and you know as it turns I allowed it to swing back and forth uh, I could weld that but I think what I want to do first is try a different design for that um, attachment point I have something I can hook up that is gonna be a little more like a ball hitch, uh, hitch actually and we'll see if that works uh, if it does that's kind of the design that uh, I think will be best in this application we'll, uh, we'll keep trying all right well I got it to stay on I changed that um, hitch to be a sort of a ball hitch you can't really see it in there but now it has stayed on all out through the field and everything around the yard so now the only test is uh, to see if it can come off if it comes off without uh, unbolting anything then I will consider it a success hey thanks for watching subscribe like comment share and all that other good stuff thanks